Hello everyone in AP European History. Today I want to talk to you about the neoclassical era in art. And I'm really going to do this in the context of the French Revolution. First thing, uh, we have a couple of artists' names over here on the right side of the page, Jacques-Louis David and Dominique Eng. Uh, they're going to be the two major figures that we'll be analyzing in this presentation. So neoclassical, to start off with, let's think about it as the idea of what's new, neo, and what's old, classical. Okay, classicism there. So the what's classical is really dealing with the subject matter often, and some of the treatment that we'll see uh, should be reminding you of ancient Rome or thinking about the Renaissance. Uh, you can go back and think about the School of Athens, Raphael's School of Athens as a model there. What's new, though, is going to be drawing on the strengths of the Baroque. And so you can really see this as evolving from the Baroque period, where we'll have more intensity in terms of color and drama. And it's going to foreshadow what's going to come next in Romanticism. But we're going to save that for another day. So to begin with, let's take a look at this particular artwork here, which is Jacques-Louis David's Oath of the Horatii. And this is considered to be one of the um, sort of finest examples of neoclassical art. You see here not just the Roman brothers who are pledging their allegiance to Rome, so it's a classical subject here. It evokes French nationalism in the period of the uh, French Revolution. Uh, it's got sort of pledging the military alliances as well. You do, not just in the subject though, you also see things like your perspective lines here and you have the setting with the arches and uh, you can understand a little bit more about uh, David and, and hearkening back to the Renaissance in its treatment. Okay. What's new about it though, if you notice in this particular painting, we have shadows, we have light, we have drama as they're saluting and the swords with the glinting light that's coming on here. We also have over here the triangular figures. Okay. The light is shining on it, it's drawing our attention into them and these women who are desperate that these three brothers are going to go off to war and probably get killed. Another one though, and this is explicitly political art. So this is, again, Jacques-Louis David, and it's titled The Death of Marat. Now Marat was a um, figure uh, associated with the Committee on Public Safety, a uh, contemporary of Robespierre. He was a journalist. He had a skin condition that required him to be in a bathtub most of the day. So that's what he's actually in, and he's writing uh, all of these letters and he's authoring all these articles. So that's who he is. He's a central figure of the revolution. Now, what has happened to him is that he has been assassinated. So as we look at this particular image here, we have all the drama of the Baroque. We have the, the colorful folds. Um, we have here very strong elements of perspective, the squares that we're seeing in there to create a sense of depth and perspective. But there's also another classical image. And so the question I have for you is, who does this remind you of? Pause for just a moment before you continue. OK. Have you got it? Look at the arm. This is the classical Pieta. Okay. This is the dead Christ in his mother's arms. Notice in this one here, we love it from the that time period here. So we've got our triangle going on there. Three points, because of course, three points evokes the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Okay. But let's take a look again at Marat. The dead body in repose with the arms stretched out. The dead body cushioned with the arm stretched out. What's fascinating about this particular image that Devaya does is even though this is during the time period of dechristianization or the temple of reason, he is painting in a way that appeals to the Catholicism of the French people. And 
and is ev in evoking that is making a very emotional tie between the sacrifice of Jesus and the sacrifice of Marat. So although it's this really secular figure, it has this intense emotional appeal to other people. Later on the scene, uh, we're going to find uh, Jacques-Louis David here, and he's going to be doing Napoleon at San Bernard Pass. And so this is, again, uh, recalling the uh, attempt of Hannibal to cross the Alps. Here's Napoleon doing the impossible. He's going up. What is exciting about this and what is really transitional to Romanticism that we're going to see here is you have all the Baroque uh, sentiment of the flowing cape and the wind blowing from behind here. Uh, but if you look at the angles of, of the horse and you look at the angles here, okay, for those of you who are art students, you get rules of thirds, one third, two third, three third. Okay, and so you have uh, the eye moving across, so you have these elements here moving around, the light moving here and capturing uh, the blue to draw your eye into this spot and connect to the red and then the cape comes up here and you follow Napoleon's hand leading you in that direction. So we have some wonderful visual elements that David is working with, but it's not a clear perspective. It would look honestly like the horse would be falling off the mountain here. And that's going to precursor some of what we're going to see next in Romanticism. It's an attempt to use movement, so rather than a static figure. Okay, and if you think about something like this, he's dead. Here, they're frozen in time. Here, we begin to see movement, and we get a sense of us being there in the moment with it. One last figure to, to look at here as well, again, to recall the neoclassical, what's old and what's new. So here's Dominique Eng portraying Napoleon on his imperial throne. This is Napoleon, the emperor, at his best, his foot raised here on the cushion, uh, the symbols of power. But notice what Napoleon is wearing. He's not wearing a traditional crown. What he's wearing here is actually a wreath, and that is intended to recall the glory of Rome, and it's a connection between this French emperor and his predecessors in Rome. Okay. And so here we've got, again, the light coming in from the side, the light and the shadow, the dramatic images in the face, the thick robes and the color that's going on that recalls the Baroque, but in that classical setting. So to recap, when we go back and think about it, what's new? Emphasis on the drama and the Baroque. What's classical? Often the subject matter and sometimes the treatment of the subjects. Thanks so much for listening. We'll pick up next time with Romanticism.